When you have been tinkering with electronics for a while and your projects are getting more serious, uh, chances are that you will need an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is an instrument that displays the evolution of one or more voltages over time. Of course you already invested in a multimeter, which is great, but an oscilloscope can do things you cannot do with a multimeter. However, uh, oscilloscopes are also much more complex instruments than multimeters, and so it takes some time and practice to get the most out of them. Oscilloscopes used to be expensive, but today prices have dropped so much that almost anyone can afford one. Already many years ago I bought this one online for around 100 euros and it has always worked great for me. For most hobbyists the Tinker Maker applications, a basic oscilloscope is more than good enough. If your thing is Arduino or Raspberry Pi based projects or building and repairing audio amplifiers or musical instruments or guitar effects, there really is no need to invest in a 4 or more channel oscilloscope with hundreds of megahertz of bandwidth and many giga samples. A 2 channel 20 to 50 megahertz oscilloscope is just fine. However, even though it may seem tempting, I don't recommend spending money on those cheap small DIY oscilloscope kits you can find online. They just do not offer the comfort and features of a low cost but real bench oscilloscope. They may be practical when traveling or when you are really tight on space, but that's probably all they are good for. I like my oscilloscope to stay where it is when I pull a test lead and it must have knobs and buttons that I can find quickly. An oscilloscope without knobs for the horizontal and vertical axis is not a real oscilloscope. Of course there are headless oscilloscopes with excellent specifications, but they require a computer and a mouse. In my lab setup the computer is needed to show the schematic, modify firmware, read data sheets and search the internet. I don't want it to be an oscilloscope as well. And I don't want a second computer because it takes up too much bench space. And of course because I want real knobs. Today oscilloscopes are 100% digital and they are called DSOs. Oscilloscopes used to be 100% analog in the past because digital technology did not exist yet. Analog oscilloscopes are bulky and limited and you don't want one unless you have very special needs. There have been hybrid oscilloscopes as well that could do both, but you don't want one of those either. By the way, do not confuse these hybrid oscilloscopes with uh, so-called mixed signal oscilloscopes or MSOs, as these are DSOs with special features for digital signals uh, and communication buses and things. So now that we know a bit more about oscilloscopes, we can move on to learning how to use them. If you are smart and uh, bought a cheap one, it will not have too many functions um, and so it is easy to get going. As I said at the beginning, an oscilloscope displays the evolution of a voltage over time a signal. And it does this in the shape of a two dimensional graph uh, with the center in the middle of the screen. Note that I said voltage and not current. An oscilloscope is a fancy voltmeter. Because it displays signals as graphs, an oscilloscope has controls to adjust the horizontal and vertical axis of the graph. On every modern oscilloscope that I know of, these controls are grouped together in a section labeled horizontal and a section labeled vertical. The horizontal section is also known as the time base, as the horizontal axis usually represents time. Then there is a third section called trigger. This is probably the most important section as it determines how and when a signal is shown. Often it is easy enough to get the signal you are measuring to fit on the screen by adjusting the horizontal and vertical axis. But making the oscilloscope display the part of the signal you are interested in can be much more difficult. The trigger section gives you control over this and it is therefore important to understand what it does and how. But first let us look at the section vertical. This section lets you amplify or attenuate the input voltage or input signal meaning that you can adjust its amplitude and you can also adjust its vertical position. This can be set independently for every input channel. By the way, in oscilloscope language a signal is also called trace. Single trace means one signal or channel, dual trace means two, etc. Another point of confusion can be that input connectors, besides being labeled channel 1 and 2, are sometimes also labeled X and Y. This refers to a special operation mode of the oscilloscope in which the X input controls the horizontal axis instead of the vertical. This is the mode to create the famous Lissajous figures with that they like to show in old sci-fi movies. 
We will not use this XY mode in this video. For us the horizontal axis will always represent time. Connect a probe to one of the channel connectors, not to the X, trigger, aux or Z connector. Note that probes often have a switch to choose between 1 to 1 or 10 to 1. This is an extra attenuation option that allows large signals to fit or to improve the precision of measurements of sensitive signals. Some people always use 10 to 1 attenuation mode and there exist probes that are always in 10 to 1 mode. It is often possible to inform the oscilloscope about the type of probe you are using, so it can adapt the scales accordingly. Before connecting the tip of the probe to the signal of interest, first connect the crocodile clip attached to the probe to the ground reference of the circuit under test. As a general rule, connect it as close as possible to the signal. However, in many cases this is not so important, as long as it is connected to ground somewhere. It can even be convenient to use the crocodile clip of a second probe just for connecting to ground, so you can remove the crocodile clip of the measuring probe and keep it out of your way. Note that ground doesn't have to be ground, it can be any voltage or signal in the circuit, but it must be the same for every vertical channel. Also note that probe ground is usually connected to oscilloscope ground, which can be connected to mains ground. So if you connect the probe ground to something other than ground, short circuits may be created and dangerous situations may arise. Therefore we only connect the crocodile clip to ground. 